Stein from Curto's Ring of Fire in Westchester County. I bid you welcome. This video post is going to be dedicated to hopefully answering a question for you that I am hit with somewhat often. And that is the question, which grill should I buy, an alfresco or a, a grill or a DCS grill? And um, I'm gonna do my best to lay the information out for you. Um, I am not going to tell you which one to get. I'll tell you what I'd buy and then with the information at hand, you can hopefully make an informed decision for yourself. Um, I think that I'm in a good position to answer this. Reason being, I've owned both grills. Um, I've had an Alfresco ALXE for nine years now. I actually, after like a two year layoff where I wasn't using it, we just cleaned her up and we're uh, getting ready to start cooking on it again. My, that grill, which I've dubbed Big Iron, um, and there's a ton of YouTube videos that I have done over the years working that grill hard. Go look at the, uh, the library here on the channel and you'll see. As for the DCS, prior to getting the Alfresco, I owned a DCS, a Series 7, and uh, which, you know, it has a lot of similarities as the 9. We'll get into that in a little bit, but um, I have a lot of experience with DCS as well. So... If anybody's gonna answer this question, I think I'm very well positioned to do so. So let's get to it. The first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna remove the Series 7 DCS out of the equation. This is strictly Alfresco ALXE versus DCS Series 9. And the reason we're doing that, the Series 7 is simply, it's not in the league of, of the other two. The, the, the Series 7 is um, a great entry point to the high end. But um, it's it's like when you compare it to the Series Nine, it's just it's it's defeatured. Yes, it does have the same burners. Yes, it does have the same ceramic rods. But there's a lot of more things going on with the Nine to differentiate them. So the Seven, it's out of this discussion. Okay. So let's get into the Alfresco. ALXE, the positives. First of all, um, if you are an avid outdoor uh, cook enthusiast and you want a myriad of ways to cook, not just grill, Alfresco is hands down, it's got the, it's the most versatile grill there is. I mean, you want to cook with charcoal and wood. They've got the solid fuel insert, which is one of my favorites. Check the videos out on that. Um, if you want to steam fry, they've got the steamer fryer insert. They've got their indirect roasting pod. Um, I've had people who have shown me by using the three position rack um, on the top level that they've actually smoked on it. I am going to try that myself. I've tried it in the past unsuccessfully, but um, the Alfresco is almost like a Swiss Army knife in the way that there are just so many different ways to approach a cook. So that's a major positive that I was going for it. Um, the other thing is just the way that the, the, the grill is built from soup to nuts. Um, their parent company, um, SES, um, what are they called? Supreme Equipment Solutions or Superior Equipment Solutions. It's a commercial equipment, a, com a commercial food equipment manufacturer. So they build these things in that same factory pretty much to like commercial grade quality. So like the design integrity of the grill is, it's next to none. Um, and you could just take a look at one in a, a showroom and see the uh, the welds on it. And it's, it's, it's very, very clean the way that the hood opens, the drawers open, any of their products, phenomenal. Um, they also do a lot of things that are like behind the scenes, so to speak, that do um, a lot, provide a lot of benefit for the grill. Um, the fact that the burners um, they're, they're 18 SR burners, they're not strict stainless steel. They have a blend of titanium in them. So the 18 SR means scale resistant. So these burners are gonna hold up under high heat. They don't scale or blister. They're gonna hold up for a long time. Um, if you like to play with the rotisserie, their rotisserie is, again, I think it's the best one in the business. I mean, it's hidden. You don't see a motor uh, capped on the side of it. It's actually in, um, it's integrated within the chassis of the grill. So um, I have put, you know, upwards to 60 pounds of food on the thing and had a very seamless uh, spin on there with no 
uh, stuttering uh, movements. So um, the rotisserie, and you take that rotisserie and you combine it with the solid fuel insert, then you're smoke tissing, then you're starting to take things to a completely different level. Uh, another thing that they do really well um, is that they take the, uh, the igniters um, are, are sheathed in uh, silicone sleeves. So they're heat resistant up to, like, I forgot what the temperature is, like six or 700 degrees. So your igniters will actually last longer. And uh, as you may or may not know, igniters are typically um, what uh, goes first on a grill, no matter what grill you have. So um, that's like a very 30,000 feet in the air, kind of broad overview of the, the benefits of the alfresco. So let me let me turn to some negatives. I mean, there aren't many. I had to kind of dig around for these. But first of all, the the knob design is. Um, I mean, in my opinion, it's awful. The knob itself is great. It's a very durable knob. It's not plasticky. It's nickel, if I'm not mistaken. So it's going to hold up. But you can't read the lettering around the knob. And it's not just me. Many people have told me this. So it's very challenging to see where you are in terms of your grill settings. Am I in high? Am I in medium? Am I off? Am I on? I mean, over time, you begin to get a feel for where things are. Like I know when I have the alfresco knob at three o'clock, I know I'm on high. Um, when they're at six o'clock, I believe it's off. So you will, you will figure that out over time, but it's for a grill that costs this much and is made so well, that was, um, it was, it's poor design. I mean, not only are they hidden, it's because the manifold that they're, they're written on is angled backwards. And I don't know if that has something to do with the fact that they put lights in the ALXC above it, but they don't really, it doesn't really work. So if they're going to redo these grills, that is definitely something they need to, to re-engineer. Um, the other thing is I can't really think of anything else about the grill that I don't like is that I don't, it depends on what part of the country you're in, but service could be um, challenging year round. And what I mean by that is like, if you live in the Northeast, they don't have Alfresco servicers. They have a company called ADCA, which is a, uh, they're based out of Arizona. They are a national service provider. So I know because I've called them and I customers call for them. They don't do service like in the Northeast from say October through the into the spring. So if you need your grill serviced, if you're going to use it for Thanksgiving or for the holidays or whatever, and your grill's not working, you're SOL because they will not send people to to uh, to service the grills during those months. This is a Northeast thing. I don't know if this is the case in the Midwest where it's cold also during that time. I'm sure you could find service year round in the South and in the Southwest. I'm just saying this is a very New York Metro Northeast centric thing. They do not service over those months. That's something that's a major plus that DCS does have, which I'll bring up later. Um, so we've done some positives. We've done a few negatives that I had to basically grasp at. Let's spin over to the DCS series nine, the positives. Um, Let's see, they're still using that wonderful grease management system. This is something that started with their grills back in the early 90s. That's the ability to slope the grates. The Series 9 allows you to cook with a flat grate or you can slope it if you're making something, grilling something that's gonna really, um, something very fatty, a big you know, ribeye or something like that. And that grease will roll off down the grate and into the trough and then it's right into your drip pan. Very easy to discard that and not only is cleanup easy, it's going to minimize flare-ups because the grease is not going down to the ripping hot burners. That's wonderful. The other thing that they did with Series 9, which Series 7 is lacking, is that they included lights finally. And the lights are in two different areas. Finally, the hood has illumination, which, you know, on the Series 7, you're only getting that side light from the, from the rotisserie. Um, you're finally having overhead lights on the hood. The hood, by the way, is also much lighter than it was on Series 7, um, which is particularly helpful on the 48-inch Series 9. But they now also have illumination on the bezels around the knobs. And this there's actually a degree of intelligence with this because the, the, the bezel lights, when the grill get the gas is off, that light is white. When there is gas flowing, it's like an orange color, okay? 
Now, cool, right? It's actually a very good safety feature because I myself, I can tell you right now, after having a few too many IPAs, I would turn, I've had an instance with, um, was it the Alfresco or the old Weber? I don't remember. But in any case, I thought I had the knob turned off. It looked like it was off, but it wasn't. There was still propane coming out. Okay, and after about three hours, after I, done, I was done grilling, my whole yard stunk of propane, okay? That could be a problem. That could be an explosive situation. So with the Series 9, if that light on the bezel is orange, you still have gas flowing. That is a major, major plus for that grill. Nobody else um, that I'm aware of is doing that. So uh, kudos to DCS for that, really a safety design. Major, major benefit with DCS in general, okay, is that they now have factory direct service. So they have like their own Fisher Pike Hill DCS people coming out to fix things. And they come out for outdoor products in the winter. And I know this because I have scheduled service for some of my customers during the winter months and they came out and they serviced the grill. That's huge. Again, if you're not in California, I mean, if you're in the Southwest, you're in Texas, it's not a biggie. But for us who want to use our grills year round, and if there's something goes wrong, and if you need service, I don't want to wait till April to get somebody out to my to my house. So DCS is doing it year round again in the Northeast. I'm assuming this is the same deal in the Midwest because they went to a factory direct model, and it's awesome. That is a major major benefit for DCS. Another great thing about the DCS Series Nine grills is how they um, handle the back of the grill, okay? Alfresco's got a very cool um, triple position rack, but DCS took the long rack and basically made four different pieces, one of them being a saute pan. So they took unusually space on the grill that is used to like toast um, hot dog buns, and you could actually do real cooking up there now. So they did a, they did a very good job with that, and they're the only company that is doing that. So negatives on the DCS. Um, I'm still not crazy about the ceramic rods. I love ceramic, but I don't like the way that the ceramic rods on the DCS grills are encased in the stainless steel um, holder because the, the ceramic is, the rods are completely exposed. So they have, um, I feel a tendency to break. One of the reasons why when you buy the grill, they give you extra ones, but they're not really easy to put in. Um, folks ask me, how do you clean the ceramics on these grills on any of you know, How do you clean the ceramics on these grills? And I'm like, well, you could scrape it and then you flip it and burn everything off. Well, you flip a DCS ceramic rod case, okay? You have a good chance you're gonna break those, the rods. So um, the Alfresco, on the other hand, the briquettes are so, they're those little, you know, they're briquettes, they're small wafers, and they're so locked in to their um, bracket, you know, casing, they're not going anywhere. So I, st I don't, I, I mean, I'm not saying that DSS needs to get rid of the rods, but because um, there is a benefit to having the heat spread out over that, you know, that long tubular piece, I just feel like they need to get them locked in better. One other negative about the DCS Series 9, they tout this charcoal tray or insert. Please don't talk about that. The thing, it's it's borderline useless. I've used it. I used it when it first came out. I was testing, uh, you know, one of those girls at my house is going back years. You can't fit any charcoal in thing. I mean, you're basically putting wood chips or little shards of charcoal, which do nothing. I am a lump hardwood charcoal guy, okay? I can put that in the Alfresco solid fuel insert. It burns longer, it burns cleaner, okay? Not with the stuff that you're gonna go put, or you could fit, you can fit in the DCS charcoal, whatever you wanna call it, charcoal basket. It's not a basket, there's no way. There's not enough depth to call it a basket. It's essentially like a tray. Um, I, 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 at this point, I wouldn't even talk about it in their marketing. Um, I never discuss, and I think I actually removed it from the Series 9 grill um, in our showroom because I don't want to purport to people that you're doing solid fuel cooking on this grill. I'm just not going down that road. You want to do that, you go with the Alfresco. So, as you can see, I really didn't find many negatives about either of these grills because they both do a fantastic job. 
So the question is, which girl should I buy, right? That's why we titled this video. Well, I'm not gonna tell you what you should buy. I'm gonna tell you what I would buy. And if I was in the market, if I did not own this business and could take these home, which I actually think I did pay something for one of them. Anyway, um, if I wasn't in the position that I'm in and I was buying these at retail, right now, as I speak to you, with the way that I use my grill and how I like to cook outdoors, I would buy the Alfresco, okay? And the reason being is that I don't just grill. I, I, like, I actually hate gas grilling. Um, I want to cook with live fire. I want to cook with charcoal. I want to cook with wood. And the Alfresco delivers that. Yes, the Series 9 has a charcoal tray, if you want to call it that. That's, that's not working, okay? It is not working. You, can re you can't really put good pieces of hardwood lump charcoal in there. Um, it's good for briquettes or broken pieces. I've cooked on it. It's not working for me. The Alfresco with the rotisserie, because I do like to spit roast a lot of stuff. They got the best rotisserie in the business. So for me, I'm buying an Al Alfresco ALXE 42 without the sear burner. That's actually the model I have with the sear burner. I regret getting it because it's too damn hot to cook on. Go look at the videos on that. But that's about it, folks. I've been blabbering for almost 17 minutes. This is a very long video. Um, if you have any questions, we ship Alfresco and DCS nationally. If you're in the Northeast or if you're in the New York metro area, call us, come in, check them out. I've got plenty of them on display. Um, questions, you could hit us up, questions at rofgrills.com. Thank you for your time and happy grilling.